after some technical difficulties. Hooray! Now, how many times have I done this fight? I'm curious. You did it that time when you weren't recording. Yeah, I did do it. <laughs> I th actually, it was right about here that I got when I when I realized that. We were talking about the contents of like a Merc's wallet, I think, before we realized that you were yeah. actually fighting things again. Playing without streaming or whatever. Yeah. And we were like, wait, what? <laughs> recording? Oopsie daisies. Yes, regenerating health. Elmo! Oh, the, wow, that sounded. Ow. Sorry, that didn't hurt your ears, did it? It wasn't that bad. It was just very was, strange. I don't know. I would say that was about as bad as the static. <laughs> That's pretty bad then, probably. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Look out! Doing that this week. <laughs> While I shoot more things. Come on, I know you're back there. Is that I another quarrying ship in the distance? Just a second, and I'll look at it. No. It, yeah, go, go look at it. No, no, no. What are you doing? <laughs> don't, don't look away from the combat. It's like, you said, look at the ship. That definitely does look like a quarrying ship, huh? Where are we? We're into we're We're on Corliss. It's a junk world. Okay. Why are there actual junk worlds? That's just like such a silly sci-fi trope. I guess there's this idea may, may, maybe it stems from this I guess this idea, this I guess this dream almost that we have like a there are enough planets in the galaxy that like, you know, we don't have to worry about pollution on our own worlds instead that we just have designated worlds where we dump all of our pollution. Because obviously because got you want to pay for interstellar shipping on your junk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we've got garden worlds to spare. Oh. Nope, wrong one. There we go. Now mind you, there is a junk world in this game that I think is actually pretty justified. Um, Namely, Tuchanka. Oh yeah, that's not. It's not just a junk world though. It's just a world that has lots of junk. I it, it was is a world which was not, which was formerly not a junk world and then got blown up. Yeah. I was actually kind of disappointed with Tuchanka. I, yeah. I, I didn't. I, like I didn't. I I didn't imagine like the deserts and the sprawl. Well, I think the big thing was the sprawling skitty cityscapes, or like the implication of the sprawling cityscapes. I figured, like. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, th I think I figured that you know, Krogans, you know, that they had like fairly, maybe like 20th century technology where they had radios and rocketry. Yeah. But like they were still fair. It was still like you know, fairly simple and kind of tribal in a way. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. not 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 in the Basically sense of. Doesn't know Mass Effect Two. Um, Chaka is the Krogan And I think. <laughs> I just took it as assumed because I don't know. I'm pretty sure the name was probably mentioned in Mass Effect 1. I don't think it was it? I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm almost certain that Rex had to have mentioned it. Yeah, I mean, in Mass Effect 1, you know, Rex is like, okay, we were tribal, you know, we have this ancestral armor that was used recently enough that it hasn't turned to dust and so on. And, you know, that doesn't really make you think of it. It's possible they could have built it while they were well, busy getting rid of the. Uh... I figured it was his armor. I figured that was like just kind of like basic metal plate or whatever. Yeah, not like. Not modern armor. Anything. Well, you have to remember that the. Uh, but still, the ceremonial armor died off a long time ago. The Rachni War yeah, happened so... like 300 years ago or something. 2000. At 2000? 2000. Rachni was it that long ago? Like the Rachni War was 2,000 years ago, and then within the past, I don't remember, like few hundred years was the Krogan Rebellions. Okay. So, um, I mean, but it's possible that the Krogan cityscapes could have been built in the intervening time between the, 
between well, I the, think the I think the program are going. Sure, but I guess I guess I I guess I imagined that Tuchunka had more varied terrain. Like there may like you know I, I don't know like kind of the kind of all different kinds of places that reptiles would hang out. Like you know you would have like some deserts, of course, sure. But I was also thinking of like you know jungles and things. Like when well, when they... Rex was talking about his um. Like, you know, where they bury the dead. I don't know, for some reason I imagined kind of like... Uh... Yeah, Plan is all one train type person going all the way back to Star Trek. You can't do anything about it now. They've <laughs> nuked it at least once. <laughs> Crap. Sure, but I was kind of hoping for some more varied and interesting... Well, we don't see much train. either. Yeah, we, I know, We see but... more Mass Effect 3 and you don't see anything that's not Wasteland, but... But that's all we get is Wasteland, though, and I was just... You know it, would be neat? If the Wasteland cityscape in uh, Montachanka was brightly colored, kind of like, you know, Mirror's Edge world except blown up. <laughs> that would be cool. You know, I mean, I guess it makes sense for the junk to be rusted and nasty. Or... But, but what about the terrain? There should be something that's not... If you were in a city, you usually don't put those where the train is too treacherous. Yeah. Oh, well, Garrus, why you die? X city, but... oh. Garrus, get up. Come on. No? Okay. See anything interesting to look at? No, no. Some ammo. Harris, you okay, buddy? Not at all. <laughs> Still conk from the party. Apparently. Conk from something, that's for sure. <laughs> what happened there? Huh? There was a there was a dude that um uh, just it looked like he got hit in the back is what happened. Like there was a guy that shot a rocket and hit him. From behind him is what it looked like. <laughs> Morton just ate a rocket. I missed it. <laughs> Morton, why are you so dumb? You know, I wonder how these guys coordinate. I mean, yes, there's whatever her name is shouting at them over the intercom, but we never ever see them re radioing tactical information back. Yeah, that's good. You kind of got, and you know, actually, kind of, that kind of makes me think of something. In Half Life 2, you kind of got the sense that the Combine were kind of relaying orders to each other. Yeah, I I've mean, seen there games like no, that before. And you could tell that they all had um, some kind of transmitter that went off and you killed them. Like, and you could, you know, they were yeah. all kind of muttering to each other. And you and you could see them do so like a force that was working together than these guys. You know, who, at least there's someone shouting at them over an intercom. Yeah, which is unusual. I mean, which you can argue. Usually they're just, you know, magically coordinated. Whereas yeah. in Half Life, you know, they actually seemed like a fighting force that, you know, they were actually working together by some means other than magic. Although, mind you, not many games have fighting forces that work together using something other than magic, so. You can argue that they've got, like, I guess, like radios inside their helmets, or but. Um, and you just can't hear them. But even then, we're not really even seeing anything. We're not really seeing any kind of coordination. They just kind of come at you and pop out of cover occasionally. They don't really do anything interesting. Well, I mean, I'll note that, you know, Shepard's team doesn't do that either, so. No, well, they no, do a little no, bit, actually. Like, you, you, you can, There's I mean, you can. Taunt. There's enemies everywhere, but they don't really coordinate. <laughs> Well, you, you can, I mean, like, you can tell your squad where to go and stuff, but... And they'll say yeah, when they do something... Yeah, that's supernatural protagonist powers. That's not like, Shepard doesn't say, okay, use lift on that guy over there. He just clicks lift. Crap, I thought I was done. There was lift. True. Oh, look, there is someone call talking to Jador. Yeah, you can occasionally... Actually... I I'm think he's saying, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that's basically it's what they're saying. That's literally that's really all they're saying. It's like a couple of scripted events. Yeah, it's definitely scripted. No doubt about that. Okay, so you well, set up and and your commander. We got well. We got to make it a. Since we brought done more communication than any other fighting force in the game. 
since we brought up the scripted thing, we should probably point out, yeah, there is a scripting in Half-Life 2. In fact, you know, Half-Life 2 is heavily scripted, but it it all looks natural and... There's, there's scripting and then it's there's good like, scripting. You know, okay, this is a scripted moment. This is a gameplay moment. This is a scripted yeah. moment. This is a gameplay moment. It's just like you're playing and then suddenly, oh crap, there go the... There go Mass Effect 3 did better with that than Mass Effect 2 did. Uh, did better with what again? I'm sorry. Scripting. Oh, like stand out like a sore thumb. Well, no, they're like they're a little bit better integrated sometimes. Okay, I guess like I'll it's a little bit better. We'll see. So much fighting. Oh, rocket! Why are there rockets blue and glowing? I'm just vaguely curious. Is it a, is it like a Mass Effect field? I guess, but you can't normally see those. This should slow them down. Well, well, I guess you can with you can with the uh, the bullets should glow too if they're Mass Effect fields. Yeah, well, like you see, thing. like you see the, the blue flashes. You see the blue. So slow. Oh. You see the blue flashes. Ah, impressive shot. Morden, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? Have you have you seen that yet? He's a yeah. medical doctor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he died. He just charged in. How? I need to get to that much better cover. Well, that works one okay. Not difficult, huh, Morden? Oh god. I did not stand up. You stupid cover. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've never figured out how this works. Sometimes you get hurt by splash damage. And sometimes cover, you don't. Sometimes you don't, and I can never tell what the difference is. Yeah. Did you see when I slid around the corner and I just stood up? That was nice. Yeah. Yeah, there was like a two second delay, so I was like, what are you talking about? And then you stood up, I was like, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was a significant amount of fighting yes, there. I'm just thinking about the cover system in Human oh, Revolution, geez. I don't think it... Oh, God, we're all the way... Oh, yeah. Oh. That was a long oh, it's not time. quite as bad as I thought it was. It's still pretty oh, bad, man. though. And there was no time to quick save there either. What were you saying, etc.? You're talking about Human Revolution. Yeah, uh, the cover in Human Revolution was not nearly that bad about popping you out. The, the cover in that in that game confuses it. I was playing and it, I'm like, it's not what I'm used to because you have to yeah, hold I mean, the, the button. From cover to cover wasn't all Actually, you can go. But it, you can stand you up. You can go into settings and, and fix that. It, make it a toggle. And make it a toggle. And what's really and and what's nice about that he was talking about is like it doesn't throw you out. So like it's it's not it's not contact sensitive. So until you push that button again, like you will uh, stay in cover. You will stand cover, and it's, 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 I don't know, I actually, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of like it. it I haven't well played much of Human Revolution yet. I'm having fun burning these dudes, though. But, yeah, Human Revolution is... Ooh. It doesn't measure up to the original, but it's still... Yeah, I thought I, I thought considering the uh, more than died again. I thought, I thought all things considered, Revolution was an excellent, uh, I guess, sequel or evolution or whatever you want to call it. Engaging hostiles. Yeah, I mean, it could I have been a no, lot. I think that might be a good game to talk about. You know, RPGs. Cause, uh, you know, if you're talking about you know standard RPG <laughs> stuff, you know, okay, you've got levels of Mass Effect. You've got party management, and you've got... Nope, 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 there we go. A lot of weapons, upgrades, and so on. And actually, are there upgrades in Mass Effect 2? Um, kind of? Yeah, there are. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mass Effect 2's got a lot more of the window dressing that makes you say, oh, RPG. But, you know, if you're playing Human Revolution, there's a lot more choice, there's a lot more story, a lot better delivered story. You're not just gunning down waves of blue suns in quite the same. Yeah, definitely. Same you're, you're, you're sneaking past the blue suns. Yeah, I actually got the ghost achievement. Every once in a while. 
I actually, I, I did, I, I did, like, take the opportunity once to hack a terminal and, like, turn all their turrets on them, which was satisfying. Yeah. See, I, you know, I've lost visual. and yet we call this an RPG, and that... It's def it definitely is an RPG. Well, People call Deus Ex and our Deus Ex a uh, FPS. It's it doesn't have levels. That well, it kind of has levels even. Like I mean, you get you get experience and skills, so you kind of have that aspect, and then you do and you do and and you do have the role playing aspect. I think Revolution, Human Revolution, does the role playing way way better. Like yeah. the the the, di the dialogue quote unquote wheel, whatever you want to call it, that weird little like honeycomb thing. It actually tells you what you're gonna say. Yeah. It tells you what you're gonna. It tells and, you, you know, what you're I gonna don't say, think I but. I felt railroaded by the by the dialogue choices in Human Revolution, and of course you can hear our thoughts on uh, dialogue railroading in this game every time we have to talk about servers. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels very, especially during the boss conversations, more than anything. The conversations feel very organic, and they actually do change and switch around. There could be like Crap. entire sections of the dialogue that you will that you will miss because you took another route. And to be fair, the first Mass Effect game kind of did that. Well, it. But that, that's not good enough. Bioware is kind of. all about RPGs, and if you know the best you can yeah. say for the their flagship series is, well, the first game kind of did this better than this game made by a first-person shooter company. <laughs> you know, that's, Dang it. Not, that's not a good sign. It's not but a good it's not, sign at all. It's not really a first-person shooter, or it's not entirely a first-person shooter. There's more to it, I guess, but then we're also it's making... We're also making... Yes, <laughs> and, you know, it's not from a company that's got a 30-year, 20-year, whatever, history of making RPGs. Yeah, because that's all yeah. Bioware Bioware's made until this point. It's it's yeah, it's like it's it, pretty much Bioware's made ever. All they yeah. do is RPGs, and they're being outmatched by Ubisoft's third. Not no, um, I guess Montreal, know. who is never. No, they're not a big RPG place, and they made a game that most people call an FPS anyways. And you know the or story is still miles ahead of this thing. It's got a um. It's definitely got like you know FPS mechanics. I don't know if I would label it a pure. I don't know if I'd label it an FPS, but it does have FPS mechanics. I'd call both of them RPGs. No, maybe. Just because. And that's fair. That's fair because there is actual roleplay involved. Even in Mass Effect, like there's enough of it that you can't call it and just a third-person shooter. I was gonna be very annoyed if those rockets killed me. I'm just saying most yeah. mainstream commentators would call Crap. this RPG and uh, Deus Ex. Uh, maybe you were that doesn't suck in Deus Ex. You, well, I don't know. I it, are you talking about Deus Ex or Human Revolution? Or Human Revolution, yeah. I it drives me crazy how easy you can die in that game. Yeah, well, I will. Yeah, but it, at yeah. the same time, if you're stealthing your way across it, like I usually do, well, well, I I typically stealth most of the time too I occasionally pull out my gun in like certain situations like I tend to do like a little bit of both mostly on the stealth side though I can't believe but I when died you do get oh into my a god fight, I think it's just it's way even if you get the maximum ballistic armor upgrade it's like you die in two seconds and that's kind of frustrating I mean, if you want to run a gun turn the difficulty down it is really meant to be a stealth game I think yeah uh, stealth is really important in that game. I like stealth. As you could probably tell by the fact that I spent the entirety of last week talking about oh. it. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Whatever. Ah. Very, very annoyed that I died there. I was so close. And there is no quick save in between here and there, so I just have to go through the last five minutes of fighting again. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I, I do definitely miss running gun. I wish there were more games that just gave you a health bar and didn't have to deal with this regenerating stuff, but it's not bad, and I think Deus Ex is one of the best implementations of it I've played. Yeah. <clears throat> Although I will say I also kind of like the hybrid system that you got in the original Halo. Uh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I enjoy story, that. I really bad. wish... Like, I think that the first Halo is my favorite out of all of them, but I really do wish that there is, that there was more to the game. Like, cause it, it, it's really all it is, is just, 
shooting, and there and and there yeah. is there and the, there, there's there's a sandbox element to it. There's as far as like shooters, oh, Jamie, especially a... especially shooters in the past de a decade, it's got a really good sandbox to it. And there's like you know there like you know with the the different weapons and whether or not you go into a vehicle or you know whatever, it, it's great in that regard. But there's still, at the end of the day, all it is is shooting. And I wish there was like I don't know like puzzles or something to mix it up. I don't know. I I like my puzzle games, like my RPGs, but I am definitely a big fan of the old school, sh school shooters. You know, like I, the Doom in, in and things of, like that. In order of games, I think my first shooters would be, let's see, um, probably Halo Halo or Doom 3 first, um, then the other, and then Half-Life. Fire in the hole. So, you know, I've got, I've got a pretty good... I definitely have a soft spot for old school shooters. Yeah, I think, um, I guess I'm kind of... And that's Ever, actually, I, Ever since I played Half-Life 2, I guess I want... I, I guess I've been wishing that <laughs> Halo was more like Half-Life 2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they're pretty complementary as far as that goes, you know. Half-Life 1... Really or, like not Half-Life. In, ...in the original Halo. Certainly a, a lot more than I did in uh, half -Life Yeah. 2. I like... Halo 1 was... had a lot of... had a fair amount of variety. It got repetitive occasionally. But there was yeah, I mean, variety. Halo 1 had these, you know, nice, you know, big, grassy environments. Yeah. You see grass in a game. How often do you see open space in a game? I thought the it's atmosphere. Wonderful. I thought the atmosphere in the first Halo was great. It felt like you were actually alone on this alien ring world. Like I remember, I f actually feeling like I was on this ring, and feeling, especially when the flood came, like feeling. Alone, holy crap! I am the last human on this ring. This Flood, just... flutter, scary sometimes. See, I, I would actually say that, say that I kind of like the opposite of that. You know, when you're with your squad mates, you know, you're you're doing vehicle sections, or you're hanging around with those big metal things. When you after you land, you know, you're with your squad. They do a decent yeah. job I'm of um, characterizing the Marines. Yeah, I mean, I don't. They got fun quips. Especially since it's just, like. It's not just the Marines. I actually think there was more character in the uh, in the Covenant grunts than there was in any meathead you care to point at in, say, Call of Duty. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, and, and like you had you had a wide you have a wide variety of enemy types that do different and it, they do different things, and you have to take them down differently. Like you know, like the jackals, for example, with their shield, you have to flank those guys. Like you know, the the grunts are your fodder. The jackals are like, you know, uh, for jackals, I usually just pistol sniped and where their gun was. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Whole. Especially pretty much. in Halo 1. Shoot, Conversation. I shut down we actually yes. have to talk to something. I saw it was you. Never yes. thought I'd say it, but I'm glad it's you shooting up the place. <laughs> Wait, you let her go in the first game? You yeah. Me go when you I told her to run, remember? And she actually oh, yeah, gets right. out. Run a nuke in a utility pod, but See? Yeah, I, I, I want to know how she, I know how she got away from a nuclear explosion and where she got a ship. Yep. Magic. Yeah, Unless there was a ship at the base that she to took, I don't know. Because Mass Effect's version of uh, continuity in save games is bringing up random cameos from everyone you meet. Small universe. Extremely small universe. Everyone deserves a second chance. So right here, she is talking about how um, she is helping Okir. What's Okir trying to do? Um, I guess she's being—I don't know. I guess she's being like a mother figure or something to the Krogan that he's creating, and she like she believes in what he's doing, even though it's quote unquote extreme. Yeah. My degree is in med science. Where else was I gonna get work? Yeah. Tell me about it. But here's, we know what's really weird, her skin tone is completely different, like in the first one she was just this very, like, deep blue-green, or green-blue, and here she's very light blue. And it kind of, it's like, really, you couldn't, like, bother to, like, you know, port over the old model and clean it up? Yeah, that, that, that would mess with me if I noticed. I mean, I the... I mean, the tattoos are all, the tattoos are on her face and head are all correct, but, like, her skin tone is completely off. Oh, more hacking. Great. Well, that was fast. Okay, now that we are um, done with the RPG and back to the, uh, back to the third-person shooter. Yeah. <laughs> It's, really? yeah, it's really, it's funny. It is, it is very segregated like that. Like conversation, shoot people. Actually, shoot people, shoot people, shoot people, shoot people. Shoot people conversation. Oh, great. We're here. Actually, Amazing. we're really, really lucky here. We have conversation, conversation, and then shoot people. It's about time. 
The batteries on these tanks will not wait while you play with these idiotic mercs. Not the smartest way to greet the heavily armed group that just kicked in your door. <laughs> so I think we already introduced Okir, and he's the mad scientist. Yeah, trying to make... I guess he, we haven't technically said exactly what he wants to do. I like Okir, though. He's not the typical Krogan. What do you know? We've got sure Morden coming face to face with a Krogan scientist. And they haven't even met, noticed each other yet. <laughs> and later, you know, later in the game, he's, uh, Morden is going to say, never met Krogan. <laughs> you know. Never met a Krogan scientist? Yeah. <laughs> and Okir is actually a decent scientist. In a, way, in a way, I mean, like, he, he, he really does, like, I mean, like, it is a shame he couldn't find anyone better to work for than Blue Suns, but, yeah, he certainly doesn't seem bad. He is, um, he, he definitely has kind of, like, this eugenics bent to him, where he talks about a pure Krogan, like, making a pure, true Krogan, when really, there's, like, you know, there's technically no such, there's, there's technically no such thing, I mean, there's desirable traits, and he is, like, I guess he's farming desirable traits to make yeah. a, you know, a desirable, a optimal Krogan. There's really no such thing as pure. So that's kind of, there's kind of a weird eugenics bent to that. Personal issues. But he is mad. He's a mad scientist. So he's Emphasis definitely a mad, mad scientist. Emphasis on the mad. So. So I still don't understand why the collectors are even that big of a deal when the Reapers are coming. That's one of the one of the biggest problems for me f with the Mass Effect 2 plot. Well, considering well, that they are, who's gonna buy the special edition? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they—I mean, like I don't know—they're—they're they're, they're kidnapping human colonies. That seems to be what did you get from the collector? Enough, I mean, you but you know, there really is. You bring up an interesting thing where, uh, with the collectors, it is kind of, I think it, they, I think they could have made it work, but as it stands, it is kind of a distraction when, um, if you were to, uh, propose that the trilogy would be episode one, learn of the threat, act one, learn of the threat, two, learn how to stop the threat, three, stop the threat. They failed miserably because there is and nothing in Mass Effect 2. And, yeah, you don't learn anything. Um, I think they could have made the collectors Cerberus has like work a little better, but I don't want to get too far ahead. To yeah, just yet. So yeah, I'll save that for later. We'll talk about the collectors Perhaps at Horizon. You know, if and we're, we spent most of the time with the collectors, and then a little bit of time with the Reapers. That would work better than the way the game is actually set up, which is you spend a lot of time with Blue Suns and a little time with the collectors. Yes, that's yes. <laughs> The collectors, they collect trains. I like the how the Sentinel armor looks like it. Why is hers blue? Isn't it usually orange? And uh, never mind. Uh, it's the it's her hologram helmet. Yeah. But I yeah. Kill my legacy with a damn bow. So she's venting the tanks? I don't know what she's doing Stop. exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, and you know, I'm not going first the clarity doesn't matter, Bioware doesn't care. <laughs> and, like, Okir says, I will stay and do what must be done, and he somehow, like, sacrificed himself so that Grunt can live. I want to know what he did, because I'm that I'm really confused as to what exactly happened. I assume he just waited longer to... He just stayed here and let him out. It's pretty, it's a pretty I wonder... Cliche. I bet you I bet you that you can just stay here and you will never die despite the fact that stuff's happening cuz I got the impression self something was getting vented into the um what is that thing I th okay it's getting vented into the room see. every game has that games see the thing is I don't know whether it's a door she's having a really bad day you've got to give her the chance to vent <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you're terrible and I wish to point out that um, Grunt looks completely different. He's got like totally different armor, and he doesn't have the plate. And it's very obvious that he's the squad member. I really, yeah, I love the unique look. I wish there were. I wish all Krogans didn't really look the same. Like, I mean, even Okir is a yeah. generic model. What's weird is that that plate is different colors. Like, some, I've seen green plates on their head, and it's weird. Oh yeah, he's got slightly different. <laughs> yeah, I know. Colors. It's like a sorry being different actually colors. Don't have that much breeding population. I would expect to see a lot of very similar looking Krogan. Yeah. With no chins. 
and here they'd all look the same for sure because they're like clones and stuff.